What's up, guys? It's Coach Gaglione here, and this is another edition of the Powerlifting for the People podcast. This will probably be a quick episode today, but I think it's an important message. And today we're talking about the difference between optimizing and adapting. And uh, this podcast was inspired by a picture I kind of saw on the internet, and it was a very simple picture, but a picture of a... Uh, I guess it was a meme, whatever you want to call it, but a picture of like a sharp pencil and a kind of a dull kind of, you know, used pencil. And uh, the the picture said um, basically something to the effect, it's easy to look sharp when you haven't done any work. And just got me thinking, and this is maybe not even the intention of uh, the person who made the meme, but basically uh, when you look at the pictures, um, you know, kind of one picture, uh, you know, the, the sharp pencil kind of represents the optimization uh, if you were kind of referencing training and uh, peaking and things like that. And then the other side would kind of uh, represent the adaptation phase when you're kind of building and doing the work. Um, so I think a lot of people make the mistake of, of confusing kind of when to be building and when to be testing and also just not actually having periods of time where you kind of deload and, and, and reload and recover. So obviously every uh, training program should have some sort of, um, you know, uh, periods of time where you're you're going through some sort of stimulus recovery and adaptation phase, and depending on what time, uh, the you know the the advancement of the lifter, the size of the lifter, the workload they're doing, their goals, uh, it, there's going to be a lot of different factors. And in general, we kind of talk about this a lot. But in periods of, um, you know, in general, if you're in an off season period, a uh, period of like a hypertrophy block where you're trying to build work capacity and kind of build a foundation. Uh, in those more kind of general phases of training, uh, maybe early on in an athlete's training career, that's going to be more of kind of the building phase, and you're going to be spending uh, a lot more time trying to adapt to the stressors and kind of building a foundation. You're not really worried about optimizing. You're not really worried about expressing peak performance and expressing your strength. You're kind of worried about building and not so much expressing. So your kind of training program and exercises and your kind of recovery modalities and things should reflect that. And I think a lot of people kind of make the mistake of actually maybe trying to, you know, optimize things too much. Uh, so, you know, examples of this would be like, you know, maybe doing like really, really frequent massage or cryotherapy and things like that, uh, which on the surface, I think those things are great, uh, especially in something like using ice and cryotherapy and things like that, where you're kind of blunting the natural inflammation process. Uh, it's kind of important to kind of save kind of those quote unquote aces in the hole. You kind of want to play those cards once you get uh, closer to a competition, uh, closer to in season where you like your performance matters more. And when you're trying to actually peak and express your strength or express your skill in a competition setting, because part of the inflammation process uh, is actually the, the stressors and the kind of the adaptations that you need to go through in order to make progress. Uh, not to say that you want to be beat up all the time. So the reason why I kind of want to talk about this, I think that the pencil analogy really uh, puts things in a really good perspective. So if you look at the sharp pencil, um, it's there's potential that actually no work was done. Uh, that could be the beginning of a season. Uh, it's also could represent a pencil that has just newly been sharpened. So maybe there's some periods of time where uh, right before a contest where you taper and you're trying to reduce fatigue. That could also represent, uh, you know, the sharp pencil as well. But I'm sure that we've all sharpened a pencil too much. And if you sharpen a pencil too much, when you kind of apply pressure to the paper, uh, the pencil snaps uh, and the lead snaps. So you actually, it's not usable anymore. So it's important that we sharpen the pencil just enough to, in order to kind of get uh, to do the task. So... Uh, for example, if you, let's say you take too much time off before a competition and you start to detrain, uh, you'll end up actually kind of missing your peak. Uh, so that's an example of kind of sharpening the pencil uh, too much. So you're taking maybe too much rest time or too longer, too long to taper, too long, to, you're, you, you've already reduced fatigue completely and then you start to detrain and lose your fitness. Uh, something like a skill sport, the turnaround is going to be a lot quicker. Something like a strength sport, the turnaround is going to be a little bit slower because strength takes longer to build. Uh, things like reaction time and endurance and things like that, those qualities build quickly and they also dissipate quickly. Uh, the more skillful the sport or the more probably endurance-based the sport, I would say the, the shorter the taper and the the you know longer you need to train up until competition, something like a strength sport or something that's a really high-velocity type event, uh, very highly neural-driven, neural probably going to need a little bit more time to uh, start to deload and taper and reduce that fatigue. Uh, so something like in powerlifting, I like for most of our men, we'll start to really, you know, start to 
do your heaviest squatting and deadlifting, you know, maybe anywhere from three to four weeks out. Uh, and you know, your heaviest bench press, maybe two weeks out. And then for women, it might be like one week out for the be heaviest bench press. And then maybe two or three weeks out for heavy squats, heavy deadlifts, depending on the advancement of the lifter. Uh, someone who's a rank novice might be able to take their heaviest weights even a week out or a couple of days out from competition. And that's going to be very individual, but in general, the bigger, stronger, taller lifter is going to need more time. Also, if they're wearing powerlifting equipment or wraps, they're going to need longer time to taper and to reduce that fatigue. The female, shorter, lighter weight, smaller lifters, uh, less advanced lifters are going to need shorter t t turnarounds and shorter time to taper. So in theory, if using the pencil analogy, it's going to take less time for them to kind of sharpen that pencil, so to speak. And their fitness, they'll have to kind of resharpen the pencil that much quicker, and, and they'll turn around and be a lot faster. Kind of the dull pencil uh, will kind of represents someone who's kind of in, like I said, that middle phase, or that you know they're going in. So, um, you know, there's advantages, and there's there's times where you want to be kind of just putting your head down and grinding and just doing the work. Uh, the key is kind of knowing when, how much work you can do before you need to kind of quote unquote resharpen your pencil and start to taper. So for most people. That's going to be anywhere from four to six weeks. There's going to need to be some sort of reduction in volume, uh, maybe a slight reduction in intensity. For most people, uh, you could still keep the intensity fairly high, uh, but you are going to want to at least reduce the volume by 50% every four to six weeks. Um, volume is going to be the biggest producer of fatigue, so by reducing volume, that's going to help dissipate fatigue quickly. Uh, so when you get into a peaking phase, a lot of times the intensity will remain fairly high throughout the training block for that last four to six weeks before a competition. Uh, but the volume will start to kind of drastically uh, kind of go lower and lower, especially once you get to that like kind of one to two weeks out. Uh, probably most of your heavy and hard sessions and most intense sessions and highest volumes uh, should be kind of done at that point for the average power lifter. And that's going to be something that's going to be individually different. So it's important to have a good training log. It's important to kind of realize kind of how long you can kind of quote unquote like write with your pencil before it goes completely dull. You want to make sure you don't resharpen or taper too soon. So like if you started to kind of reload uh, like every like one to two weeks, that might be too you know frequent and you're not going to get as much out of the pencil as you could. You want to continue kind of writing as long as you can while it's, the pencil is still usable. And again, so for most people, that's going to be around four to six week range. Uh, if someone's a rank novice, um, you know, that might be a point where they can no longer do like a linear progression. They can no longer add kind of pounds to the bar anymore. And they might need to transition to an intermediate program at that point. Uh, so when they're transitioning to like a different level. So typically for like a novice lifter, they're going to be able to progress and continue to kind of, uh, on with their training, like and add progress week to week. And a more intermediate lifter will be able to kind of maybe progress every week or every couple of weeks. And an advanced lifter will only be able to come uh, uh, to hit a PR or add make progress every couple of months or maybe even may take them as long as a year to hit some sort of like personal record or all-time PR uh, depending on you know their body composition goals and and that sort of thing so again uh, just kind of going back to the pencil analogy so it's really so once we kind of taper it's important that we also uh, make sure we don't reduce the volume or intensity for too long Again, if you ever again sharpen that pencil too much, and again you start to apply pressure like after a meet, uh, so maybe like after a contest, one of the things that I like to do uh, is just kind of unload the spine at least for like one week. Uh, so for some people, that may be you know anywhere from two to four weeks, but I don't like to uh, get step away from training completely. Uh, but you'll do more traction-based activities. You might do more things like belt squats and 45-degree hypers instead of barbell squats and barbell deadlifts. You might do things like feet up benching or dumbbell benching uh, and then slowly transition into things like high bar squats without a belt and maybe stiff leg or deficit deadlifts without a belt and then uh, some maybe spoto pressing. So exercises that are going to limit the amount of weight you can use but still provide a high muscular stimulus. So again, in, in, uh, in closing, so I think that pencil analogy is very good. So it's really important that you uh, when they're, when you're, uh, to know if you want to be optimizing or adapting. So typically during an off season period, uh, during a hypertrophy block and when you, in the early stages of, of a strength training block, those are, don't be afraid. Like I said, if you're a little beat up, if you're a little fatigued and you're not able to express your strength fully, that's totally okay. Cause it's during a building phase. Uh, but then coming, uh, into a meet, uh, it's really important that we quote unquote, start to sharpen the pencil and making sure that we're kind of ready to express our strength and do the work. So 
Uh, it's also important that after a training cycle is over that you also take some time to, again, resharpen the pencil so you're ready and, and fresh for the next training block. If you're feeling really beat up going into a meat preparation cycle and you're not kind of ready to do the work, uh, you're not feeling good, you're kind of dealing with kind of injuries from like a last meet or something like that, that's not going to be good either. So so times you should be kind of optimizing is kind of uh, going into a contest or going into a new training block. I think those would be really good instances. And basically every four to six weeks, you should have some sort of period where you're kind of reloading. And then um, in between, in between that, you kind of should be focusing more on uh, adapting and not optimizing. So it's okay if you feel a little beat up. It's okay if you're not hitting like kind of all time best lifts. Uh, but like I said, every four to six weeks, kind of reducing the volume, you should be able to express your strength in a good way. Uh, and that's kind of a good kind of general rule of thumb for most people. So uh, make sure you kind of figure out like what your tipping point is, where your kind of pencil starts to get too dull, where you can't do any work anymore. You don't want to grind so hard that you kind of set yourself backwards and start to kind of, uh, you know, detrain that way. So just finding that delicate balance between doing the work, uh, you know, so getting all your, you know, getting the writing in and, and then resharpening your pencil. So I think that's just a great analogy. I thought it was really cool. It's something that, I think can help people understand kind of uh, deloading and reloading and the pro the peaking process and things like that. I just thought it was a really cool picture. So short and sweet today, but I think it will uh, hopefully that message serves you well and gives you a little bit of an understanding because I, I do get a lot of questions still from uh, like, why do I need to deload or why do I need to take time off? Or is this going to, people think that they could only just keep doing work, but the pencil analogy is good because there's going to be a certain point if you're writing with a dull pencil, it's just not going to work anymore. It's going to break. And the thing is, once you're out of lead, you're done. So it's important to sharpen the pencil before it gets too late. Uh, you do because once you kind of go too far, if uh, if that if you kind of like lose that tip, uh, you're not going to be able to do any more work, and then you're going to be stuck. So, hope this message finds you well. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the podcast, uh, please give it a five star review. It helps other people find us. If you want to support the program? Check out the links below. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Until next time, stay strong, and we'll see you soon.